Welcome back to Leonard Bros. Game. I'm David, and we're still playing a little bit of Sonic Adventure 2 Battle on the GameCube. Uh, this is the kart racing section, so there's actually a you know, section you can unlock uh, once you get through the initial level. So we're going to play, I guess, at, uh, play, I'm sure why not. Uh, basically, this was the uh, add-on that was tacked on to this game to uh, compete with, at least at first, with Mario Kart and stuff like that. It's like, not only do we have this, you know, uh, uh, excellent gameplay and other stuff, but uh, for third-person platforming and action-adventure stuff, we also have this kart racing mode. So if you don't like one, you can uh, go to the other, but, like, turning is pretty much a brick in this thing. I, I you know, the only reason you, you have it in there is, for, especially for this version with Battle, uh, they added a lot of multiplayer maps and other add-on features and stuff, and it's really, like, you have to, like, make it, like, an all-stop, and I, I, I tend not to. I tend to hope that I can actually, you know, turn appropriately, rather than, because I, sort of, I haven't played this in, like, ages, either. And it's kind of weird, because I was going to choose one of the, uh, Knuckles levels, and the game locked up on me. I had never had it lock up on me before. It's just, like, you know, loud tone blaring, and the game just froze, and so I had to turn the whole system off and restart it. Anyways, is this thing you're supposed to go a little slower, but you end up, like, drifting. And then, like, once you've locked in position, um, I'm still in last place, though, so that's kind of disappointing. Of course, it is Shadow, so he's kind of sad. But anyways, a spoiler alert, in this game, Shadow was supposed to die. He was supposed to sacrifice himself to save Maria, is you know, Gerald Robotnik's granddaughter, which would mean that Dr. Robotnik, um had relations, had, had a daughter, so it was like, how did, how did that even happen? We never even hear about that, but, oh, whatever. Um, the fact that they refer to him as Jail Robotnik, they don't refer to him as, like, Eggman Sr., it was kind of refreshing in, in this version of the game, the fact that, you know, at least they haven't completely abandoned the, the concept, but I think by now, nothing, nothing calls him, uh, Dr. Robotnik anymore, not even close. Anyways, they also have this boost here, which, you know, you have boost pads on the main platforms. Oh, dear. Anyways, the game in general is just kind of a, a hodgepodge of different things that, you know, some work, a lot of it doesn't really work. But what does, it's, you know, what made the series in general as good as it, as it probably should be. Anyways, I'm going to exit out of that, just a demonstration of, of that mode. So I'm going to back out of that. That's the story mode. You, go, <clears throat> you play through the entire hero campaign, you play through Dark, and then once you've played both of them, you get the last story, and you get Super Sonic and Super Shadow. They come together and they fight uh, the uh, new baddie in this game, which I forget who it is. But anyways, I can go in into the Chow Garden with any of these characters. And the funny thing about uh, Dr. Robotnik in this game is when you pick him out of the Char Chow Garden, he's not in his robo-mech. He's this. And he runs really, really fast. He's, like, insanely quick. And like you wonder at, at this point, like, how... Because all the old Sonic games, uh, somehow, Robotnik was able to outrun Sonic, like, Every time. Pick up... Here we go. Pick up the little child. Like, Farina! I don't know how much... I don't work much work into her. Anyways, this is where the, you step on that and you, you uh, have the link cable going. You, you turn to you. Jack. Ah, oh, good old Jack. This guy I've like leveled up like crazy. And he can beat all of the, uh, the minigame adventures the world over, pretty much. And they got the little entertainment TV thing. And they got a surprise box that they can actually convince them to play with and throw around a ball and stuff like that. So they hatch out their eggs. Or, of course, you can grab one and, like, take it up to the Chow Race or Chow Karate. Let's take it to the Chow. Just watch the, uh, the Chow as, as Dr. Robotnik cheers them on, even though he's, he's pretty much done everything. We can take him through the Vegeta Race, sure, why not? <clears throat> that won't take too long. Uh, Rocky or Jack? I guess both of them are, uh, are pretty high up there. Obviously, uh, either I cheated on one or did something else to, to max them all out. But um, this is more or less just a demonstration of how these extra modes work. And 
I think basically, yeah, they start out with all your all these basic chow, like, hi, I'm a little guy, and hi, I'm really overpowered, because I've got all this insane stuff on me. And they win awards, and you get the emblems, and when you get the emblems, you unlock all the other features, and pretty much you have to do everything perfectly in the whole game to unlock that level that was started, that showed up in the first place. And that's not happening. Anyways, you press the A button here, and you uh, have your stamina bar, and basically you're supposed to strategically uh, encourage him to go faster or slower and stuff like that, depending on what points you have put in from the Chow stuff. And so since he already, he already made the goal, he's like, That's, we're done. We're, 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 you know, way ahead of everybody. Because that's like, you know, he's way too good for that mission. But that's how that works. I don't know if his exit, like his exit just goes back into quit race. I can show the, um, let's get back in there. Walk back in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do a little bit of like one tournament match and then we'll probably quit out of it all. Rocky, gotta have Rocky, it's gonna be karate. You know, that's not karate, that's, you know, boxing. But, you know, the way they treat it pretty much in here is, is, is pretty much like, like boxing kind of. But they got this, uh, tournament fight. And they're just so adorable. Are they so cute? Yeah, there's a zeal bar at the bottom too that you can actually push to in increase uh, if in case they're uh, getting they're losing or whatever. That's um And it's pretty much this kind of loop over and over again. He just runs up and they, they punch each other. And it's also the halos or horns on top of the chow, whether they are, are good or evil. So in order to unlock all the stuff, you have to have raised, fully up raised, an evil chow and a good chow in order to go through their specific dark chow or uh, light chow uh, races and competitions. That's how that works. But now that we're back in the main uh, stage selection, uh, yeah, for some reason I tried to go to the Aquatic Mine here and the, the game locked up, so let's try Pumpkin Hill. Let's see if that doesn't go crazy on me. So one thing I found with a particular memory card I'm using, uh, it actually has triple the storage space of the average memory card. It's a third party, though, too. So a lot of people are just like, you know, you get what you paid for when you try third party stuff. The way that Knuckles and Rouge work in the game is that, um, like in, like in uh, Sonic Adventure 1, they have a gauge which is supposed to tell you where the emeralds are. So you're supposed to find shards of the emeralds and you're supposed to be like, I'm really close to it. I'm not seeing it unless it's above me. Nope, it's not above me. It's got to be below. Usually they're like buried in stuff. And as long as I don't fall to my death and have a bad controller issue here, I can climb up here and uh, break open this container. Oh, there we go. Get it. Anyways, I have to traverse this area in a certain time limit and uh, they're always... Uh, there's only a certain amount of places that they can these three emerald charts can be in But there are always different places every time you play so it's like you got to be pretty much you know, If you want to get like a perfect rating you got to be lucky. There's also these sections too where you can um, Just pick up these hint boxes and I forget whether they like cost rings or something like that. anyways um, It's pretty Expansive world, I, I suppose, and in, in this regard, it's more of the the open world section. People were expecting to see at least people what they did see from the uh, other versions of the game. From other, you know, the original Sonic Adventure had more of the open world style of uh, gameplay and exploration and stuff, and this is what Rouge and although you know they these levels obviously aren't as tedious as say Big the Cat. Or Amy Rose. Amy Rose in, in the first game, she had this giant hammer, and she would just uh, go through levels similar to Sonic, but for the most part would be the damsel in distress kind of thing. And she would either run away from enemies that were like too big for her to fight, or she would just smash them with her mallet. And it's like, well, why can't she smash all the enemies with her mallet? Why does she have to be running away from this other guy? You know, these robots that are chasing her down because they just know um, Emerald somewhere around here or maybe not scarecrow's house and so the hint boxes will tell me 
that there's emeralds in certain places, but you get the idea. That's how their sets of levels work. And pretty much since there are only like, you know, three types, three characters, Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails, on the good side, and you got uh, Eggman, Rouge, and, and, and Shadow on the other side, you have your, your basic structure. This is where people pretty much, you know, consider the, uh, the type perfected in terms of the variety of levels and the uh, narrowing down uh, not only this, this character select style, but uh, the way the, uh, the methods and wor levels worked in the boss battles as well. And the story, you know, pretty much tied down uh, compared to previous versions and compared to even later versions. Uh, I'd say this is like the pinnacle of the 3D games with uh, music and characters and other kinds of development. Um, and that's about it, at least, at least for, uh, for this game series. Uh, so until next time.